Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Round the Table with Cullen Art. I'm very excited for this special edition because we're doing something today that we should do every single day, and that celebrate Chef Appreciation Week. I'm joined by chefs from across our company, which is exciting. We're going to highlight their wonderful contributions to Cullen Art and Compass Group and highlight all of the activities that we'll be involved with for Chef Appreciation Week. So let's start right away by introducing our wonderful panel around the table. Once again, I'm Matt Santarpier. I'm Director of Learning and Development for Cullen Art, and I will be your host with this very special episode of Round the Table. Let's first jump all the way out to California, and we're joined by Chef Jennifer Minicciello. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us again, and if you can, introduce yourself to our group. Hello, um, my name is Jennifer Minicciello, and I am the Dining Director at uh, Brentwood School out here in Los Angeles. We're a K through 12 private school. We have three different locations that we feed the kids out of and two separate kitchens. Um, we also currently are feeding uh, veterans from the West LA VA and we feed them lunch and dinner Monday through Friday. Wow, that's wonderful. And we thank all of our veterans for our service, which reminds me of an episode we did of Round the Table honoring our veterans a few months ago. So Jennifer, Thank you so much. We appreciate that. More from you in a moment. Now we're going to jump to the Maryland area and we have Chef Mache Barr. Hi, Mache. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? It's good to good, see thank you. Thank you. I'm the chef from Shea Bar. I'm the executive chef here at Tiro Price in Baltimore. We are a business and institution. Um, we basically cater to all the needs of Tiro, even the ones that we have to curate on the fly. Um, our common goal here is basically to continue to wow our community and be supportive of everyone that comes into our unit. Wonderful. Thank you, Mache. We appreciate you joining us today. Thanks so much. And we'll hear from you in one moment. Don't leave this virtual table yet, Mache. And we're going to jump to Chef Amanda Catanaccio. How did I do that, Amanda? Better? You did very well. Thank hey, you. Listen, thank you. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Amanda Catanaccio. I am currently the executive chef at uh, Caring of Americas in Wayne, New Jersey. Uh, we are a global luxury high fashion company and uh, Caring represents such brands as Gucci, E. St. Laurent, uh, Bottega Ventetta, and uh, nine other brands. So uh, they produce, manufacture, and ship right from our warehouse. Uh, so if you were to go online and say purchase a pair of shoes or a purse or something, um, that goes right through our building in Wayne. Wow, that's wonderful. So I know what Mache is thinking and what Jennifer is thinking and what I'm thinking is, can we get any kind of company discount? You don't, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> Very good answer. Very good answer. Well, thank you, Amanda, and thank you for joining us. The theme of Chef Appreciation Week, and I want to start with this, is food unites us and chefs inspire us. You know, we say this often, we're a company of people, and those people, especially our talented culinarians, really make Culinart and Compass Group successful. So it's service, it's food, it's hospitality, and nothing exemplifies that more than the chefs that work for Cullen Art Group. So it's a great week to honor all of you. A couple of special things that we'll be doing at Cullen Art, we have changed our chat program. That's your regular monthly, and tra monthly training and development program that every location manager sponsored by Compass Group make sure they talk about that important information with their team. We've changed that to honor Chef Appreciation Week and we've added information in that. We also have various activities that are going on throughout the month of September within the company to honor and recognize the fabulous chefs that make up 
all of the wonderful things that we do literally on a daily basis. And we'll also have an organized nudge campaign. And nudge is the communication mechanism that we all use right on our phone to communicate in real time, whether you're an hourly team member or a leadership team member. So all of these things are working in tandem to help us recognize and realize the importance of Chef Appreciation Week at Cullen Art and at Compass at large. So let's start with a question for our round the table group. First and foremost, and Jennifer, I'll jump back to you in California. What today, as a chef, is your must have ingredient? What do you need every day? What's up and coming? And what's something that you need as you open service literally this week? I think you opened up services at the location, you know, a little while ago. We did. We opened up this week. Um, we have a very high uh, end clientele. Uh, not only our students, but our faculty and staff are fed through us and they like variety. So we do all sorts of interesting ingredients that we can get our hands on. Um, they really like things like roasted beets, which is huge here. Um, we do a lot of things with mushrooms. So we've done a couple of mushroom burgers that they really like. So using wow. mushrooms. Um, so we try and try and do some plant-based um, kind of options um, here in, in, in tandem with everything else that we do here. Thank you, Jennifer, that's You're great. Welcome. Michelle, let's jump out to your neck of the woods. What's a must-have ingredient for you these days as you, you know, reactivate your location as well? A uh, must-have ingredient right now is, to be honest, because we have such a diverse group, right now everyone's looking for light, very bright, vibrant food, foods. So, like, and also they're more health conscious. We're finding more people are really geared towards gluten-free items. So how can we create that? So now we're doing more boneless sandwiches. Um, we're doing um, more dressings from scratch. Uh, we have an avocado dressing coming up next week um, for our California salad. So just trying to be inventive. They're really going for salmon and grilled chicken. But the biggest part of all is they're really going for more vegetables and uh, bright food, just everything nice and bright and light because it's an office setting. Everyone has to go back to their office. So Cheesesteak is kind of heavy. Thank you, Mache. I appreciate that. How about you, Amanda, over in New Jersey? What's a must-have ingredient for you now as you're serving uh, people wearing Gucci and all those brands that we can't afford? Well, it's funny that you mentioned the name brand. Uh, much like my other fellow chefs, uh, we are very super high clientele. Uh, we have uh, actually the worldwide CEOs and VP of the company that are always in and out of the building. Wow. Um, so for me, uh, I think anything more like really super fresh produce, um, everyone in the building is either French or Italian and uh, they really look forward to having something very light, very bright, fresh, um, not overly saucy. And actually the smaller the portion, the better for them because they're European and <laughs> that's just, they eat to live, not live to eat. <laughs> right, right. I always forget that. I always forget that. But that's so important, Amanda. And I, and I want to stay with you for a moment and we'll continue with the group and thank you for that. But, you know, especially what we've been through this past year and a half with this pandemic. And we believe now that, you know, we're at the post pandemic period and we are recovering and looking forward to brighter days ahead. And even though that there have been some roadblocks going on now with variants, et cetera, we still feel very positive about, you know, a forward moving momentum and know there's brighter days ahead. And we can see that in all the locations we serve, especially, you know, the people on this Zoom cast right now, all of your business is reopening. But keeping what you went through in mind over the last year and a half, what do you love most about being a chef? And I bet that's changed now than it did a year and a half or two years ago. And you're all going to get that question because I love it. But what do you love most about being a chef or what is a top reason? Um, what I love most about being a chef is connecting with somebody through my food. 
um, food tells a great story and tells a lot about a chef. Everyone cooks differently. Um, particularly in my position now, uh, there are a lot of high stakes that are going on upstairs in the offices. So for them to come down and eat at our cafe, we are there 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, how long their, their break is. We are their moment of just like, ah, that release just to come downstairs and have a good meal and forget everything that's going on in their day. And all they can do is just indulge in something that we've created. Um, and then to have that feedback for them to come back and say that that was the best uh, bow bun that I've ever had and, and or something else that we're doing that for me I think solidifies my happiness as a chef yeah right and, and that and that drives your passion which brings our guests back especially during this tumultuous period we've all gone through food now more than ever does unite us I think we see that more now than we we did before um, after everything we've been through as a society and as a company. So thank you, Amanda. That was thank a great one. Thank you very much. Okay, how about you, Mache? What do you love in light of everything that you've gone through over the last year, year and a half? You know, what gets you excited today and what do you love about being a culinary expert? I think um, the last year, just speaking for myself and for the team, um, just, seeing what COVID or what we're, been, we're, we're still currently in right now, I'm realizing how food is a healer and certain foods actually do impact your day. Um, more bright vegetables, more and less like fatty foods can like weigh you down. So like in a way I've realized now I'm more inspired to just keep my community healthy and provide them with what they need to feel sustained. And at the same time, I like I have been on a journey learning about food and how it impacts our body as a whole. Um, so I'm enjoying sharing that with the community and our team to give them a different way to think about how we have lunch every day. Um, just sharing what I know with other people and then being able to provide them a meal that they wouldn't have thought, oh, I can do I can use these vegetables to make it like a dressing. I can have a beet hummus like what's beet hummus, you know? just providing an opportunity for them to see how food can really be curated differently and still give them a nourishing meal. That's what I'm really enjoying right now. Wow, thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Wonderful answer, appreciate that. How about Jennifer, what do you take from this experience and what do you love now most about being that chef or culinary expert? I have to agree with my colleagues. I think it's one of those things where we have we have not only the students at our school, but our, our faculty and staff. And I think kind of um, making sure that they're taken care of. And I think that's one of the things that chefs like to do. And I think, um, you know, that's an Italian side of us too. There's some of us out here that are Italian. I think it's one of those things, like as a chef and as a woman, we want to take care of people and make sure they're okay. And I think, I think that part of it in that feeding and making sure they're healthy and um, giving them something that's that's delicious and they can walk in and go wow that's really good um, and and different you know like we're not I, you know yes we sell chicken strips and french fries because we have to because we have kids that want that but today we had like a beef barbacoa that we made and we made burritos and uh, you know we do things that are kind of uh, a little different all the time uh, tomorrow is sushi day so we have sushi all, all up here um, wow, that's so great. We bring in a lot of different um, kind of concepts so that they can have a variety and then also have the health too. So, well, that's great. Thank you. Wonderful answers. I want to highlight, you know, something that all of you are involved with right now at Cullen Art and cer certainly Compass Group. Remember, Cullen Art is part of that Compass Group family of great companies. You know, we're not only a leader in culinary innovation in honoring our people and our wonderful chefs, but also we're a leader in our diversity and inclusion initiatives. In fact, Compress Group was recognized by Forbes magazine in 2021 as being a world-class company and a leader in diversity and inclusion. And all three of you are involved in activities directly related to Chef Appreciation Week and some directly related to diversity and inclusion. So I'll start with you, Mache. 
Michelle, you're part of the Compass Group Influencer Network, and that's directly tied to not only diversity and inclusion and celebrating our wonderful people, but also Chef Appreciation Week. Can you take a few moments and tell our watchers and our listeners what that influencer network means? So the Influencer Network is an opportunity for me to share my perspective of what food service is through my eyes, as well as be able to convey some um, trends, different opportunities that can come our way to um, for our accounts, as well as maybe highlight some of the different things I have learned along in the journey. Maybe some we might introduce some new friends along the way. And um, I do some nonprofit work. So maybe bring you into one of the classes that I've taught on um, holistic um, on holistic healing and health and wellness through food. So um, I'm looking forward to basically being able to share culinary and Compass's vision, as well as be able to let everyone see what's happening here in Baltimore. Wow, that's wonderful. And you're sharing kind of best practices with other Compass group companies as well. Um, that's another benefit of being part of this family is that we all can learn from, you know, these different companies as well, all with that same goal of guest satisfaction, the guest experience and cutting edge culinary concepts too. Great. Thank you, Mache. Amanda, you're involved in something that I find fascinating as well. We were talking a little bit about it before we started recording, but you're involved in the Women in Culinary Challenge. Can you talk a little bit about that for our group, please? So I was asked to represent uh, my sector of Compass Group, which is Culinart, and um, I will be competing against other women of other sectors of Compass Group um, in a culinary challenge. Um, from what I understand, the program is to help empower us women as chefs, unite us as women, um, because I'm not sure if any, everyone is aware, but um, I'm sure my colleagues would agree with me that coming through what we call the ranks of the kitchen, um, I myself was always the only female in every kitchen that I've been in. Um, and I've had to work probably 10 times harder to get where I am today than any of my male colleagues. Um, so I think it's a really awesome and great opportunity that Compass shines light on us women chefs and allow us to um, show our talent and, and that we, we belong in the kitchen and we're as good as anyone else. And I love that answer, Amanda. Let me ask you a follow-up question. How does it make you feel coming up through the ranks, you know, all these years and months and training being the only women, woman in the kitchen and having to work all that much harder, how does it feel now to be part of a company I just mentioned a few moments ago that was recognized as a best employer for diversity and inclusion? How does that make you feel at this point in your career? One single word, Matt, empowered. I love it. I love it. Now, Jennifer, you were involved in something very interesting, and, and some of you uh, may have seen this on social media, but you were involved in honor of Chef Appreciation Week and following our theme in this Pass the Bread video. Can you explain that to our group? Yes. So we, we created a video that had chefs off from all the different sectors of Compass. And we all talked about how food unites us. So the completed video is one person talking and us creating the whole like kind of in sequence. Right. Um, so you pass and we're a, a, actually a, a, passing right. a piece of bread. Right. It's interesting. Yeah. And it just talks about how food will, you know, unites us all, all across the, not only the United States, but I mean, actually the world. I believe we have people from all over Compass. Yeah, well, all over North America and beyond talking about, you know, chefs inspiring us, but food now more than ever uniting us. It's, it, it's a perfect theme. You know, Jennifer, let's stay with you out in sunny California. Although we can't see it because I know you're in your office and you're, you're in mid-service, but we imagine it's sunny. Let's talk about you working with your other culinary colleagues, other chefs, sous chefs, cooks that make up the culinary group family. Working yeah. with those colleagues, do you, do you still learn from them? What's your experience in working with different chefs today? 
Yeah, I actually am fortunate enough. I currently have two executive sous chefs and an executive chef. Um, and um, I absolutely love having all of our brains together to, to think of menus and, and work out issues and um, how things are, you know, just kind of how things are going to flow and what food should we bring in. So we're very fortunate to have four of us at this point. Um, and I, I, I am, my executive chef has been here at this location for 12 years, not with Compass Group, but he's been here all 12 years. Sure. The school's been open. And so that is, that's helped us a lot too in, in uh, making sure that we're exceeding our clients' expectations. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Let, let's jump over to Amanda for a moment. Amanda, when you work with, you know, other culinarians within Culinart and beyond, you know, what's your experience of working with our other culinary talent in the company? And what are you still learning today? Well, unfortunately, I haven't really had much of an opportunity to work with um, other chefs within the company uh, because of COVID and um, we haven't really been visiting each other's accounts. Um, but what, what I will say is I find that within myself, I'm very humble in the fact that uh, the staff that I do have, though they're not considered management, um, we do have a lot of open discussions and as they're growing and learning and finding themselves as chefs, I, I feel that I also would like to empower them and, and keep them learning and growing. So we actually sit down and, and discuss menus and food ideas and they come to me with ideas and um, we tweak them in such ways to make them work and fit to what we're doing. Um, so we all are kind of feeling included and a sense of pride instead of it being like, you know, I'm the chef, so you're going to do this, this, and this. I like sure. to just have a equal playing field. And, you know, with that being said, as, as a chef, I'm still growing and learning every day and I'm, I'm still learning new things, even from people who I would at least expect to learn new things from. And um, that's, that's a, another reason why, like, I really like being a chef and just working with, other talented culinarians. Great, great. Uh, Amanda, I'm going to stay with you one moment, and then we're going to talk about one of our last questions as we do a recap, but uh, let's talk about who inspired you. Can you think back in your culinary career, and I know you know already because I see that smile on your face, right? But who inspired you most? Maybe it was when you were just starting out in the business, in culinary school, etc., as a chef, who's been your inspiration professionally? Um, easily, I can say my mother. Uh, I learned at a very early age how to cook. Growing up in a, in a single parent home and my mother having to go out and work and, and do things and coming home and, and making dinner for us, I learned that by wanting my mother's attention, I very quickly learned how to cook so I could spend that time with her in the kitchen. Um, and my love for food came from there uh, because at the end of the day, all that mattered to us and no matter what was going on is we sat down at the dinner table and had um, a hot meal together. Wow, I can't think of a better uh, explanation of how you know food unites us and uh, chefs really do inspire us, right? Even chef mom, so that's wonderful. <laughs> Mache, I want want to jump over to you, uh, and I want to ask you two questions. The first question is, uh, again, working with your colleagues, are you still learning? What's your experience working with other culinarians? And number two. Who has inspired you the most professionally from a chef standpoint? So when working with my team members and my, the fellow chefs here, I learned a lot. Um, we just had a new uh, man, catering manager join us. She has, um, she's Jewish and she, her background in food is significantly different than what I would think day to day because that's not how I eat. So just sitting down today and talking with her, like what food she can eat, like the purpose of food, like what does she eat for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, like what those foods mean, the, the purpose behind why they cook food the way they cook food. You learn a lot just by listening. Yeah, um, you're getting that different cultural standpoint as well. And, and that's our guest base too. They can benefit from that shared knowledge. Yes, because I don't think that we've ever 
really geared ourselves in that direction when we had caterings that came up. So now I feel like by her being an addition here to T. Rowe Price, she'll definitely be able to give us that feedback we need to support our people here that are um, that are kosher. Um, we do have meal kits, but just to have an understanding of what foods we could put on the menu for those people who would be able to enjoy a meal with us on a day to day. Great. As far as like who inspires me, to be honest with you, it would be at this time right now, it's really my team. It 100% sure. my huh. team. And who started, who motivated me from the beginning would be my Uncle Peppy. He started out in the industry. Um, oh, famous early. Uncle Peppy. Uncle Peppy is the man. Um, but he started out, he gave me all the tools I needed to start out and just say, he told me, um, even though you're, you're a female in the industry, it doesn't matter. Your job is to show, um, to show that you can do the job as good as anyone else. Don't let it because you're a woman really get in the way of who you are. Just be consistent. You do the job. Wow. Great. Great. Great answer. I love asking who inspires you because it's an emotional response. You know, whether it's Amanda's mom, it's Uncle Pepe for Mache, um, you know, because you think immediately back to that time you learned or who gave you that experience. So, Jennifer, in your case, who's inspired you professionally? Um, you know, that you, immediately when I ask that question, it pops into your mind. Yeah, um, my inspiration as to become a chef was my grandmother in back in the day. So again, I think just being in the kitchen with them, you know, learning all the Italian recipes because they don't measure anything. It's not written down. We just have to learn by measurement. Um, in professional, I've had a couple. Um, I have worked with some amazing chefs um, across the board and um, you know, some of them have been my bosses and some of them have been people I've worked side by side with. Um, and, and I think you, I think when you have a good team and you have that co cohesiveness, that that's what inspires you is like, there's a lot of times where you won't have that. And there's places that you just, you get into this flow and everything just flows because everyone's just with each other. And I think that's the, the, the inspiration is, is us trying to find that flow within each of our own areas, along with, you know, the the, the staff that we have. Great, so. wonderful, wonderful. I love it. We got all three different answers. We got mom, we got grandma, we got uncle. Um, and I love how all those personal connections. I have one more question for this team. If you were giving advice to a, a fellow manager, a fellow chef or a fellow team member in general about a way that we can honor our chefs for this important chef appreciation week and a way that we can exemplify, you know, food inspiring us, you know, chefs inspiring us and really how that unites us during this process, especially after all we've gone through. What's a piece of advice that you would give to another manager, another chef or a fellow team member. And Amanda, I jump back to New Jersey and I start with you. <laughs> uh, a piece of advice would be, I guess, follow your heart, stick with it. Um, everything will turn out in the end. So Mache, what's something that, or a piece of advice that you could give a manager, a chef, a fellow culinarian, about what they could do to honor their chefs at their location. Thank you. Like a Welcome. simple thank you. I thank I you. I love it. Oftentimes as, as chefs, we're not doing it for the, well, all of us do it for the money because we have to take care of our families. But we're usually doing it for the look on your face of saying, thank you, that this meal was delicious. Thank you for taking the time to think about that catering event. Just thank you. I think thank you goes a long way for all of us. No, I think that's excellent. And we can't stress that enough with all of our team, you know, how important a thank you is, a hello is, a good morning or good afternoon is. It sounds uh, small when we think about everything happening, but those small things, as we know, are very large, especially in our business. Jennifer, what's a piece of advice you could give to a, a manager or a fellow team member about a way we can honor our chefs? 
Um, I, I agree with M Mache. I think the thank you part is very, very important. Um, we try here every every day coming and when they go home, basically, you know, when, when they're done with their shift, it's like, thank you, you did a great job today, pat on the back. Um, I, I also think that having a sit down meal helps together. Sometimes having family meal uh, where if, if we can, a lot of times we try and do that once lunch is done and you know, they're all sitting down and we just kind of are able to sit and enjoy each other as people versus having to be running around doing what we have to do. Um, but, but it's a definite, it's a, Hey, you did a great job. It's, you know, we're recognizing you as a person and you're, you're working, you're working really hard and we're all working really hard right now. Sure. And, no, that's a know, great, it is, great answer. It is great that we can recognize them as, as, um, you know, not only, only that they're hardworking, but that maybe we can sit down and have a nice, uh, meal together to kind of helps a little bit. Sometimes. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, Amanda, we're going to jump back out to New Jersey, one of my favorite places, and we're going to see, what do you think? I mean, when you talk about, you know, chefs inspiring us and uniting us and how food does all those wonderful things, what's a piece, piece of advice you could give a fellow manager or a team member on how they can keep Chef Appreciation Week in the forward part of their mind? Uh, for me, I think it's just connecting with them and um, kind of really hitting home. The theme here is just how food inspires them and empowers them and unites them and us as a team, um, as a whole. Right. Just keep reminding them of what we're doing, how we're doing it, them sharing their personal stories. Excellent. Thank you all. I want to thank everyone for watching Round the Table with Cullen Art, our special Chef Appreciation Week episode. I want to remind all of you to visit Cullen Art Connect, our very own YouTube channel. You can see all of our episodes of Round the Table. I want to remind our team as well to celebrate Chef Appreciation Week. We've got a lot of tools and resources at your disposal, and we can't think of a better way to honor these fabulous culinarians that make up our terrific company. I thank all of you for listening and watching. Once again, I'm Matt Santarpia, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.